Let's continue our lesson with parabolas uh, with graphing, where we're given an equation and we have to graph. Remember that we may need to put our equation into vertex form, which might require us to complete the square for only the squared variable. That's the nice thing about working with parabola equations is that there will only be one squared variable. A little less work for us when we're completing the square. And then, of course, as always with parabolas, we want to be sure to plot five points. That includes the vertex, and we're going to use some symmetry to save some time when we're graphing. All right, so here's our first equation, our first example that we'll work on together. Notice that the x is the variable that's squared, and that means we want to isolate the non-squared variable. To get this non-squared y by itself, we just want to divide both sides by that negative 4. So our equation that we're working with becomes y equals x squared divided by negative 4. And since there's a 1 up in the numerator in front of that x squared, we're going to pull out that coefficient of negative 1 fourth. That's our a value. And we're going to be working with the equation y equals negative 1 fourth x squared. All right, so this is in our nice vertex form. Notice that since the y is the variable that's isolated, this is going to open vertically. Since the a value is negative, we know that our parabola is going to open down and that it will be a wide parabola since that a value is a fraction uh, that's smaller than 1. All right, so hopefully by now you recognize that when there's only the squared variable, that the h for our vertex is 0, and the k, the number that's added or subtracted on the outside of that square, is also 0. So our vertex for our parabola here is actually going to be at 0, 0. And we're going to go ahead and just plot that on our graph here. Okay. We always want to label that vertex. Now you might remember uh, with parabolas that after we find the vertex, then we just want to plug in some values, make a little table for ourselves of different x values that we can plug into our equation and find the y's. What I'm trying to do here is find some x values that are going to be smart values. So if I pick an x value of 1 and plug it into my equation, 1 squared is just 1, and then I'm going to have a fraction. So let's actually pick an x value of 2. And watch what happens when I plug that 2 into my equation for the x. Remember, I want to square that 2 first, which gives me a 4. And the reason I picked a 2 is because 4 and 1 fourth multiply and cancel each other out easily. So I get a y value of negative 1. So I have a point then at 2, negative 1 on my parabola right here. And then another smart value Instead of picking 3, which is going to give me something when I square it that's not divisible by 4, I'm going to pick an x value of 4. Because I know that when I square 4, it's going to give me a value here of 16, which is easily divisible by 4. And negative 1 fourth times 16, I can go ahead and reduce that, it gives me a y value of negative 4. So I also have another point on my parabola at 4, negative 4, right there. And there's the right half of my parabola. And remember that we're going to use that symmetry since that first point is two units to the right of that imaginary line of symmetry. There has to be a partner point two units to the left. And the other partner point is four units to the left of that line of symmetry. And there's our nice parabola. So sometimes you want to pick some smarter values of x instead of just 1, 2, and so on uh, so that your parabola fits a little bit nicer into your grid and works with your equation a little bit better. Okay, so here's our next example. And notice that we have a y squared and a y term. So we're going to have to complete the square for the y's. The first thing we want to do, remember, is always move that constant to the other side. So we're working with x plus 3 
equals y squared minus 2y. And because there's a coefficient of 1 in front of my squared term, I can go ahead and find that number that I'm going to put in the box to complete the square and balance my equation on both sides. So remember the number that I put in the box is going to be uh, the negative 2 divided by 2, and then we're going to square that value. I get negative 1 squared, which is just positive 1, and that's the number that I'm going to add on both sides. Over here on the left side of my equation, I have the like terms of 1 and 3. I'm going to combine those. And then remember, we write this trinomial as the square of a binomial. So that would look like this, y minus 1 squared. And then all I have to do is subtract that 4 from both sides to get my equation into vertex form. Okay, So there's our nice equation transferred into vertex form. The vertex that I'm working with is, be careful, the h now is on the outside. And remember, I do not change the sign of that. The k value is that number that's paired inside the parentheses with the y, and that's a positive 1. So my vertex is at negative 4, positive 1 right here. I also recognize that because the x is the isolated variable, my parabola is going to open horizontally. The a value right here is a positive 1, so I know that my parabola, when I graph it, should open to the right. So I'm just going to label my vertex on my graph here. Now, the thing with parabolas that open horizontally is that we don't want to build a table where we pick x values. You see how x is isolated in our equation? We're going to actually be solving for that variable. So we want to pick y values instead. And the way that I know what y values to pick are I look at my vertex and I see that the y value is 1. So I either want to pick two x or two y values, excuse me, two y values either above that y value or below that y value to plug into my equation. I'm going to pick the two that are above my y, my vertex, because they're both positive y's. So I'm going to plug in a 2 and a 3, and I'm actually solving for x this time. So my table is a little bit backwards. So I'm going to take that 2, plug it in for y in my equation, follow order of operations, get 1 inside of the parentheses and square that, so I get a value of negative 3. Now, remember that this is an ordered pair. This is my x, this is my y. So the point I'm plotting is actually negative 3, 2, which is right here on my graph. Negative 3, 2. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with a y value of 3. I'm going to take that 3 and plug it in for y in my equation. I'm going to get 2 inside of the parentheses. When I square 2, I get 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. This ordered pair that I'm going to plot is 0, 3. And that's right here on the y-axis. And if I connect those points, I can see that I have the top half of my parabola that opens to the right. And using symmetry, I'm just going to partner those points across that axis of symmetry and get the bottom half of my parabola. And there's our completed graph. OK, last one, example 3. Graph the parabola y squared plus 4x minus 2y plus 9 equals 0. We see that the y is the variable that's squared. So we want to keep those terms on one side. And we're actually going to subtract that 4x and that 9 to the other side of our equation so that we can complete the square for our y terms. We'll find that number that we can add in here. And we want to keep our equation balanced. All right, so remember our magic number. We take half of this b value. That would be negative 1. We're going to square negative 1, so we get a positive 1 that we're going to put in our boxes to complete our square. We'll write this trinomial as the square of a binomial. y minus 1 squared equals negative 4 
x minus 8. I'm going to bring that minus 8 over to the other side using some addition. So I'm going to end up, I'm going to write it over here, y minus 1 squared plus 8 equals negative 4x. And now what I want to do is isolate my variable x. That's the non-squared variable, so I'm going to divide each term here by that negative 4. So here I have a 1 up in front of my parentheses. That negative, or 1 divided by negative 4 becomes negative 1 fourth. That's my a value times y minus 1 squared minus 2 equals x. Okay, so that was a little tricky. We had a little twist to that. This is our equation now in vertex form. Remember, the h is out here on the outside of our parentheses. The k is inside of the parentheses. k is always paired with y. h is always paired with x. So our vertex of our parabola is negative 2, positive 1. I want you guys to think about which direction this parabola would open and see if you can pick some values to plug into your equation here and finish the graph on your own. Pause the video, come back when you're ready to check your graph. Okay, so here's what your parabola should look like. The vertex is at negative 2, 1. I picked values of uh, y of 3 because when I put the 3 in for my equation, I got a 2 which is an even number that I know will easily be divisible by this negative one-fourth. And the same thing for picking a y value of 5, so that when I put that in, I got an even value of 4. So when I square that, I get 16, and negative one-fourth times 16 gave me something that divided easily by that 4. So here's our nice parabola. It does open to the left. It's a horizontal parabola since the x was the uh, isolated variable. It opens to the left because our a value is negative, and it is a little bit wider parabola because our a value is a fraction. If you got this, you did a great job. Uh, you should be proud of yourself, um, and you are doing really nice work, you guys, with these conic sections.